As some of you might know, I get called a Zuma a lot. And not only by the enemy team, but my own team too. And honestly, understandable. And that's why I'm making this video, because I, I want to explain to you guys what I do, how I do it on my controller, and maybe if you want to replicate it, maybe you can. It's, it's gonna take practice, obviously, but uh, I'm pretty sure if you guys put in the time, you can do it too. In this video, I'm gonna give you some tips and routines that I follow to flick like an actual MK player. Are you gonna get reported by other players? Yeah, but that's fine. Because everything PC players can do, controller players can do better. If we have our aim assist. Anyway, if you want to know what makes my shots hit so consistently, watch till the end. Before we get into the video, I wanted to remind you guys to consider hitting the like button, the subscribe button too, because as of now, there's a lot of people not subscribed. Anyway, enjoy the video. This might just be me. But when I play projectile heroes, literally any projectile heroes, it's easier to hit my shots when I flick than when I don't. For example, when I play Hanzo, instead of tracking and predicting where they are going, I would just predict where they would be at that next moment and flick my joystick to exactly where I think it would be. Does it work 100% of the time? No. But in my opinion, it is actually easier doing it this way. That doesn't mean though that you need to flick every single time. When someone's strafing to the left, you flick left. If someone's strafing to the right, you flick right. If someone is moving towards you, do not flick because then it isn't necessary. This goes for any speed of projectile. But I will give you guys a few exercises that especially helps with projectile heroes. First one being actually just turning your camera. Just left and right, move forward, move backwards. Try and see how fast or how long you need to turn your stick to exactly stop on the target. The second exercise that I would give you is to practice flicking left and right in between these bots and try to move your crosses back into the middle. So basically what this does is gonna, it's gonna teach you how much you need to move your stick to the left or to the right for you to be able to flick close range. After you're comfortable with that, do the exact same thing, but just move back a bit. You'll feel immediately that you don't have to move your stick nearly as much when you flick longer ranges. So it's just to give you a feel for how much you need to move your stick. Then simply move to the side, straightening back and forth, trying to hit these two targets. What you'll notice is the bot closest to your crosshair will take less movement to hit and the one further will take more movement. So trust me when I say practice this on both sides so you get used to the movement. The number one thing that I wish I knew sooner was that you shouldn't be using your crosses as a tool for aiming, if that makes any sense. You should be using your crosses as a guide. So when you aim at someone, when you track someone, when you flick at someone, don't look at your crosses. Don't. Look at the person that you want to shoot. Trust me, your eyes will guide your crosses onto that target. But anyway, what I like to do with single shot heroes, like Ash, uh, Cassidy, Widow, is I like to just aim at the feet of the enemy that I'm trying to shoot and then just flick up and then from up flick down side to side you know rinse and repeat with every hero because that really helps especially when you when you tend to be on high ground with heroes like ash or widow it's it's good practice to be able to flick down and up as well especially when you have high ground most of the time same thing goes for hit scan than it does for projectile heroes so when you shoot when you do these exercises Try and figure out how much you need to move your thumbstick to be able to hit the flick. Try and notice that the longer range, the less movement. The closer, the more movement you'll have to make on the thumbstick. If you really want to look to improve with hitscan, honestly, Widow Headshots is probably the best way to learn. So I would highly recommend trying this. You don't have to play against other sweats, you can just fill a lobby with bots and maybe change 
the difficulty of them, but um, still, I highly, highly recommend this game mode. As I said in the beginning of this video, you won't be able to flick every single time. Sometimes you will need to track with projectile heroes, with hit scan heroes. But here's where the secret sauce comes in. There are three things that I've changed in my settings. <laughs> that's, that's helped me so much to the point where it actually feels like I'm cheating. So when you go into your settings and you scroll down to your in a dead zone on your left stick you'll see it's disabled or on 0.15% and when I go back into the firing range you'll see nothing happens because it's still on the value of it being disabled but if you scroll down and you put this on zero something interesting happens without touching my controller my aim assist is consistently kicked in which already helped a lot but that's not all what actually makes this very strong is what i actually use now i lowered my aim assist window size to 35 percent because i'm using legacy mode now and if you didn't know what legacy mode is it's basically a much more aggressive type of aim assist but i didn't always use it because it actually threw off my aim when i had my aim assist window size as big as it was but now that i've lowered it it feels so much better and i i recommend i recommend this to anyone willing to try it because it it's made my life so much easier and so much better when playing this game <laughs>